This is a video I've wanted to make since I made that Lunar Lux video all the way back in June six months ago. God, it's ages. And after I did some digging, I noticed it was going to get a major update, so I decided to wait until now to give it a fair shot. Law Mage Academy is a turn-based RPG mixed with a school-slash-social life simulator by Varinius. It's made with a good old RPG Maker engine. Man, I fucking love looking at games made with it since I had a lot of fun messing around with it when I was 14. So it's like really exciting to see real games made with it. But honestly, it's a pretty limiting engine, but seeing developers either push it to its limits or break right through them is always fascinating to me. The game begins with this dramatic monologue explaining the world. Every year, new students flock to the prestigious Law Mage Academy. A, a Law Mage is someone who's allowed to wield more powerful magic compared to regular mages. A talking book called Past asks you a set of questions and then assigns you to one of the four houses that fits you the most. I was assigned to Visage, the home for those who seek balance. Ooh. Um, there are differences between each house, but currently they're pretty minor. After selecting your appearance, the book tells you that your year at the Academy begins after the bells ring. You have 200 days to wisely spend at the Academy. Every action from going to class, hanging out with other students, or listening to lo-fi hip-hop beats to study spellbooks to, will cost time to pass. By the way, that lo-fi hip-hop thing, that's a real video that exists and I kind of love that. You'll want to try to do everything eventually, but figuring out when you should do something is a surprisingly fun balancing act. Oh, I want to go to classes to learn about the world, but I really want to learn this useful water spell to use in combat, but I also want to hang out with my childhood friend Ayn. Player choice is easily one of the game's greatest strengths. There aren't that many restrictions on what order you actually do things, and everything feels meaningful in some way with a useful benefit linked to literally anything you do. So, when you get up in the morning in-game, it's up to you to be independent and actually considered what you'd need to do. For example, for my first playthrough, I went to two classes to learn about magic to get a healing spell, and then learned about potion making. At night, I constantly studied a lightning spell that eventually made my character exhausted, which gave me a huge debuff in combat. While you can use nighttime to stay up late doing stuff, going to bed early is just as important. You'll need to get a good amount of sleep for the combat class, which is run by the extremely strict Zelka. After picking a weapon, they teleport everyone into a forest to collect three flowers. Sounds easy enough, but this forest has monsters roaming around. Combat is very much your standard RPG Maker affair. If you've played any classic JRPG, you know what to expect, but there's an interesting focus on weaknesses. Every enemy has these icons below them, which indicates that they have a weakness you haven't taken advantage of yet. By using the correct physical attacks or magic, you can exploit these weaknesses to lower their aura. When it hits zero, the enemy is unable to move for two turns and their defense drops significantly. This is when you blast them with more spells or even unleashing a powerful aura attack. These deal huge damage, have neat animations, and useful side effects. Ainz, for example, does physical damage and lowers enemies' defense, meaning he's great for setting up other party members for big numbers. Aura attacks are unique to each character. They're unlocked by befriending party members enough to unlock an event where they, like, develop his characters and learn the attack. For example, Ayn realizes he's maybe not particularly great at magic, and decides to make up for it by being a better physical fighter. He shows you his punches, but they aren't great either. You give him the motivation to keep on trying, and then he decides, oh, I'm gonna add a bit of magic to my punches, and wham! He does a bunch of sick attacks. It's a really heartwarming scene, and I love how it links the social parts of the game to the combat. Studying starts to really pay off here since new spells mean more opportunities to lower enemies' aura. It's incredibly satisfying to finally learn a new spell and have it be useful straight away. Spells can even be used out of combat to clear obstacles for loot, which is cool and rewards smart planning. While combat is certainly nothing new, it manages to do enough to stay engaging with how it elegantly links to the other parts of the game, and I love the aura system. Any sort of, like, stagger mechanic in an RPG can really add a lot to the gameplay, and Law Mage is no exception. The quest system is great as well, since you can actually fail them in surprisingly interesting ways. 
For example, I bumped into this student who lost his book in the forest, so I decided to go find it during another class. This gnome was holding onto it, so I tried to convince them to give it back. The fucker was not wanting to give it back, and in fact they tried to bribe me with a spell book, which actually was a difficult choice to make. I had to stop to consider whether I should take the bribe so I can get stronger, but also fail the quest, or just rob them. I robbed them. All of these difficult choices and moments in Long Mage Academy makes it surprisingly replayable. The demo is about 1-2 to two hours long, and I've done two playthroughs at different houses making other choices. The presentation is a bit more complicated to talk about because there are some default RPG Maker assets in there, but that's fine to have in early versions, and Verinius has stated that he's planning to replace them later on, so I'll judge the custom stuff. The overworld characters and battle sprites look quite nice, the main menu fits with the theme of the game perfectly, and the character portraits look really good. However, I do have some minor problems with it so far. Full screen mode really doesn't do the game justice, as things aren't scaled properly, so it looks all blurry and fuzzy. Um, that's more of an RPG Maker issue than is a Law Mage issue, so... I don't know. Um, but Windows mode looks perfect and the sprites look really clean at the right resolution. So, you know, I put my brain to use and I did some research to fix it myself, and... Yeah, no, um, this turned out horribly, why did I try? <laughs> I'm not too sure about how the overworld actually looks. At first, I thought it was because of the placeholders, so I wouldn't have brought it up. But then I saw how nice the houses look in nighttime with that cozy lighting that adds a lot of atmosphere. I think it's actually because of how the lighting looks at day, because it looks a bit flat. I think if a bit of attention was put into the outdoor areas, it could make the areas look really good, even with the default assets. I think there's some default music in there, which is fine, but the custom tunes range from good and fitting to absolutely fantastic. Special shout out to the battle theme, that's so important to get right in an RPG, and Law Mage pulls it off. Another thing that's really important to RPGs is writing, and I quite enjoyed reading it. Most of the characters are quite likeable and charming, but I personally want to dropkick these students for being complete douchebags, which, I mean, okay, yeah, that's intentional, that's a good sign. The setting as well, while it's, okay, somewhat generic, is still very interesting, and I did leave the demo clambering for more, because there were some really interesting plot points I'd love to learn more about. The only actual problem I have with Law Mage Academy is the very beginning of the game. It's kind of hard for me to explain what really bothers me about it, so now I finally have an excuse to bring up one of my favorite games that is similar but has a better start. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky is surprisingly similar to Law Mage in many ways. Both have a starting personality test, partner character, bullies that screw you over, a day-to-day -day structure, and start off at a slow and peaceful pace. While in both, these are perfectly fine to get you used to the world and introduced to the characters, they aren't exactly the most engaging either. However, Explorers kinda gets away with it due to its first set of cutscenes, that just throws down a lot of its interesting plot points at the start to instantly get you invested and in asking bigger questions about the overall plot. It also chucks you straight into the gameplay while you build a connection with your newfound partner. This makes for an extremely good hook and keeps you invested in the plot, even when you're doing less interesting day-to-day -day tasks. Law Mage does reveal some super interesting plot points right at the end. I think it could benefit from a more punchy opening, it's kind of lacking that hook that many of my favourite JRPGs have. Like Explorers, I think some seeds of the plot should be planted from the start, so they have time to grow as you keep on playing, and maybe throwing them into a bit of combat would help to make the game immediately interesting. The funniest thing is that there's already a great point you could start at in the game. In your first class, this guy Jin is late. Later on, it's revealed that he was defending himself from monsters on his way to class, but no one else would help him. It's it's right there! You could start right there! Like, I don't know, you're maybe you're walking with Jin and Ayn to your first class and then you all get attacked, oh no! So then you could have a bit of combat right there, so it could be more exciting. It would work as well because it would introduce you to the characters and transition right to you being late for the class. 
which might make for a more interesting start as you wonder how that even happened. But it's really not that big of an issue as, while well, yeah, it did take some time, the game really pulled me in. I started to have a great time despite there being some flaws. I mean, Law Mage Academy is basically Harry Potter's Sona for Golden Traveler, and it somehow works. Don't let the default assets dissuade you, the fun RPG gameplay, pleasing music and good writing kept me engaged throughout. I'm especially interested in where the story will go, as Verinius is a human rights lawyer in real life, which is very respectable and cool as fuck by the way. He mentions that he wants to express his ideas about law, ethics, morality, and justice through the game itself. And I absolutely love it when indie developers use their games to share their ideas or experiences to the world that are unique to them. And hearing something from a human rights lawyer could sound like it could make for a fascinating story. But I guess we'll have to wait and see.